Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do a problem that asks you to find the inverse Laplace transform of a function and it asks you specifically to use the convolution when you're finding the inverse Laplace. So I have the problem here and on the side I also wrote what the convolution is and this was from a Laplace transform table that I used in my differential equations class so it did actually have what the equation for a convolution is for when using the Laplace transform which is this. I know Laplace transform tables are normal, but I don't know if it's normal to have the convolution as well. But if it's not on there, it's a pretty simple formula to remember. The way a convolution is usually written, it's f asterisk g equal to the integral of 0 to t, and then the multiple of two functions, and one function is reversed and shifted. So that's f of t minus u here in this case. And the Laplace transform of this is capital F of s, capital G of s. So let's go ahead and get started with this problem. It's basically going to be mostly just plug and chug, and then you just want to make sure that you do the integral correctly to get the right answer. So for this problem, we have y of s is equal to the above. You can rewrite that as 1 over s minus 2 to the 4 times 1 over s plus 1, and then we have that in the f of s, g of s forms. So now the next thing we're going to do is look at what the inverse Laplace of f and what the inverse of Laplace of g is. Alright, so looking at my Laplace transform table, if we do the inverse Laplace transform of f of s, we'll get lowercase f of u. So looking at my table, that gives me 1 sixth t to the third e to the 2t. We can say that that's equal to f. And if we do the inverse Laplace transform of capital G of S, we'll get lowercase g of S. So I get that that's e to the negative t, and that equals to g. So now we can pick which one we want to be, because also I didn't mention that the convolution is has the commutative property. So you can, again, call f or g, whichever one you want. And you can do the integral from g of t minus u f of u, it's the same thing as f of t minus u g of u. So I usually will plug in just u to the more complex one and I'll plug in t minus u to the simpler one and that kind of evens out the difficulty of the integral but I don't think it would really be that much of a difference if you plugged in t minus u to the more difficult one. Probably it's pretty much the same thing. So I'll just go ahead and do it how I did it, so I'll rewrite the Laplace transform, the inverse Laplace transform of f of s, g of s is equal to the convolution, is equal to 0 to t, 1 6 u to the 3, e to the 2 u, e to the negative t minus u du. So in this case, I plugged in t minus u to the what I call g. All right, and then the next thing you have to do is just find or solve for the integral. So this integral is not too bad, but it is definitely testing that you know how and remember how to integrate and you have to use um, integration by parts a bunch of times. I have a video where I go over a shortcut to doing repeated integration by parts and I'm going to use that technique in this problem and I'll put a link box somewhere here where you can watch the video if you don't know the technique I'm doing. So first I'm just going to simplify this integral. So I'll pull out the 1 6 and then we have 0 to t, e to the 2u, u to the third, e to the negative t, e to the u, du. Because we're just integrating the u as a variable, we can consider the t as a constant, so we can pull that out as well, e to the negative t. So then this is just our integrand. Not too difficult, but again, if you didn't have the technique of the shortcut, you would have to do integration by parts multiple times. So I'm going to take take the derivative of u to the 3 and this is the shortcut and then I'm going to take the integral of e to the 3u on the right hand side. So that's going to be 1 third e to the 3u, 1 ninth e to the 3u, 1 27th e to the 3u, and 1 81st to e to the 3u times e to the 3u. Alright, and then we're going to draw diagonal lines. The first one is positive, then the second one, the 
this is so sloppy. Second one's negative, third one's positive, last one's negative, and this is times zero, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to get one sixth e to the negative t times, and then we just go diagonally to fill in the placements. So we have u to the third, one third e to the three u minus three u squared. Where did I get the three from? Oh, whoops, that's supposed to be three. That's supposed to be two. Minus three u squared times one ninth e to the three u. So see, we're including the negative. Then plus six u. I did this wrong. Six, obviously three times two is six. When I was taking the derivative, I was just writing really quickly, so I forgot the coefficients. Okay, six u times one eighty-first e to the three u. Sorry, that's one over twenty-seven. Then minus six times one eighty-one. This should be six. 181e to the 3u, and that's all from 0 to t. So I'm going to simplify that. I always make stupid mistakes when I'm redoing a problem I already did, so I'm sorry for that. But anyway, the next step I did was just simplify, so I just rewrote it as 1 third u to the third e to the 3u minus 1 third u squared e to the 3u plus 2 ninths u e to the 3u minus 2 twenty sevenths e to the 3u still going from 0 to t and we're basically just simplifying. Actually the next thing I did was plug in t so we're gonna get 1 6 e to the negative t and then plugging in t first you'll get 1 3rd t cubed e to the 3 t minus 1 3rd t squared e to the 3 t plus 2 ninths t e to the 3 t minus 2 twenty sevenths e to the 3 t minus and then if you plug in 0 you get 0 minus 0 plus 0 minus 2 27ths. And then we're simplifying that, so that would be 1 6 e to the negative t, and that's 1 third t cubed minus 1 third t squared e to the 3t plus 2 ninths t e to the 3t minus 2 27ths e to the 3t plus 2 27ths. And then you could probably leave that as the final answer, but if you distributed the first term in the front of the, the brackets, you would get your final answer. That would be 1 over 18th t cubed e to the 2t minus 1 over 18th t squared e to the 2t plus 1 over 27 t e to the 2t minus 1 over 81 e to the 2t plus 1 over 81 e to the negative t. And that's your final answer. So I think these problems are pretty straightforward as long as you know what the convolution definition is and as long as you know how to integrate then you should be able to get the answer, especially if you have a Laplace transform table. But that's an example of how to use the convolution to find the inverse Laplace transform.